Hi, so in this video we're going to be looking at the speed of convergence in the solar model. This means if we have some sort of shock to the economy or if we're just not at the steady state for whatever reason, it's how long is it going to take us to converge to our steady state. So in order to look at the speed of convergence, we're going to start with our equation of motion in the solo model and this is just how our effective units of capital evolve over time however this is quite a complicated differential equation and so what we want to do is to solve this analytically and just solve it in this video preferably and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a linear approximation of this differential equation we have here and we're going to do this using the Taylor approximation or the Taylor expansion and which and the Taylor expansion is this so we may know this from studying mathematics but it basically says that we're going to approximate a linear line about some point and the point that we're going to approximate around is point A and we can say as we as we move slightly further away from that point how much is the first derivative going to change and how much is the second derivative going to change and so on and we can go on to third fourth fifth derivatives however for simplicity i'm only going to think about the first derivative so we can get rid of all all these terms off into the future and so we're just going to have a straight line and its slope is just going to be given by the tangent at the steady state point and we're going to take the approximation around the steady state here so we're just going to be modeling a straight line through the steady state so it's not going to be a great approximation as we move further and further away from the steady state but if we assume we're going to be close to the steady state then we should be okay so the steady state as we showed in a previous video this is the this is the value or the quantity of the steady state it just depends on our parameters of saving depreciation and so on and so what we can do is we can turn this taylor approximation equation and instead of using x's and a's we can use our actual terminology so we're looking at how our effective units of capital evolve over time and we're going to be using the steady state to do this. So that's our k tilde star. And so if we if we plug our values in here, what we're going to notice is that the evolution of our effective units of capital at the steady state is just equal to zero. By definition, we're at steady state, so the the capital stock is not changing anymore. So we just have that that is equal to zero. And further to that, our um, our term here, our derivative of the uh, change in effective units of capital over time, well, we're just taking the derivative with respect to k star of our sort of equation of motion equation. So it would be the derivative of, whoops, if my pen would work. We go it'll be a derivative of this if I remember correctly and so the derivative of that with respect to k star or just with respect to k is going to look something like this as I've written it below and so we're, we're only left with this this term because this term drops out as it's equal to zero and notice that we're using this sort of curly equal sign because this is this is an approximation so this isn't an exact relationship and we just need to make sure we remember that that is the case so now we can substitute in for our k at, and we we know that our k is equal to this expression here so well more more accurately we have that our k star is equal to s over um, I won't, I won't say what each of these terms are, but our k star is equal to something like this, and we can substitute it in, and then I've just shown a few lines of working where we substitute that in, we've got it to the power of minus 1, so we can flip this fraction upside down, and then we get our s's cancelling out quite nicely there, 
and so we get to this line of working and then what we'll notice is that we can take out this factor of minus 1 minus alpha because these two terms in the brackets are the same or they they at least have this factor of 1 minus alpha that we can factorize out and we get and we get that our evolution of effective units of capital is equal to something quite a lot simpler than what we had before and we have uh, just an ordinary differential equation so in not an ordinary differential equation but a, a simpler differential equation and we can we can solve this and the way that we go about solving this differential equations is we find the particular solution and we just add that with add that together with the homogeneous solution so in order to calculate our particular solution we're going to have to use our initial condition and that initial condition is that we're going to be at steady state and our k our evolution of capital is equal to zero and so we can just plug plug that into this side of the equation equal to zero equal to zero yep yeah. and just plug that in and the the only way that this this equation is going to hold because we have these parameters that are not equal to zero by assumption we are thus going to have that our k tilde is equal to k tilde star i.e we're at steady state and that's our particular solution and then we can take our homogeneous solution where we're going to set our k tilde star equal to zero and just solve solve through here and I I won't plug it into the original equation but we can then we we basically we had uh, k till the star here and we've just set that equal to zero and we can just say add this across to the other side and then we do get an ordinary differential equation here and we we should know how to solve these differential equations or these ordinary ones we just have a a sort of solution that we can write down from these so our solution to this ordinary differential equation is that k tilde is equal to a where a is some arbitrary constant and we will be looking to find a in a minute and it's multiplied by the exponential of our our b term which we sometimes call this as b so to the exponential of the minus b multiplied by the time and this is how k tilde evolves over time so in order to get our general solution we just add this this homogeneous solution to our particular solution and we get that k tilde is equal to k tilde star plus this term that we've just found so now in order to further come to Get, a, get an understanding of how k tilde revolves over time we're going to need to find the value of our arbitrary constant a and we do this by using our boundary conditions and what we're going to assume is that we're given some value of k tilde at time equal to zero and I'm not going to not going to sort of make any guess of what this is I'll just call it k tilde naught subscripted with a naught to show that we are at time equal to naught and then we can just plug this into our general uh, solution and so we know that t is equal to zero so this whole term just becomes e to the power of zero which is one so that drops out and we get to here that we have our k tilde naught is equal to k tilde star plus a and so we found our value of a our value of a is just k tilde naught minus k tilde star where k tilde naught is our initial condition and k tilde star is our steady state level of effective units of capital so we can plug this into our general solution instead of a and that's what I've done here so this is our new general solution without any arbitrary constant very nice so the next step in order to actually convert this into speeds of convergence is we can do a little trick in rearranging our terms here and so th this term is just the same as this term in the red box but we have just rearranged so that we have split our 
exponential term to the power of our minus some some combination of constants multiplied by t and we split it in such a way that we can represent this equation as a weighted average of these e terms or these exponential terms and so you'll notice that we have our initial condition weighted by e to the power of minus let's call it bt and this and our steady state is weighted by 1 minus e to the minus bt and so this this is a weighted average because their weight sum to 1 so at any point in time our k tilde is just some way between our initial condition and our steady state which makes a bit of sense intuitively we're starting at our initial condition and we're going to end at our steady state and k tilde is just measuring where we are so that makes sense at t equals naught we're going to be at our steady state or no not our steady state we're going to be at our initial condition and as t tends to infinity we're going to tend towards our steady state so that's why we've represented the equation in this way and so our speed of convergence how quickly we move from our initial condition to our steady state is going to depend a lot on our exponential term here how this evolves is going to tell us how how our um, k tilde evolves and how quickly we move from the initial condition to the steady state so in order to look at the speed of convergence we can use the half-life of um, the transition so the half-life is defined as the time time t so the amount of time we need in order to transition half of the distance from k tilde naught to k tilde star so instead of just saying how long it takes us to transition the whole difference the whole distance we're going to ask how long it takes to transition half of the distance because if you think this is as t tends to infinity we get to the actual steady state so it could take an infinite amount of time to actually move the whole distance from the initial condition to the steady state so it makes more sense for us to study how long it takes to move half the way and because as, as we get very close to the steady state we may never actually properly reach it so the time it takes to travel half the distance, well, our weighted average representation, our weights are just going to have to be a half. So when our k tilde here, when that is half the way between k naught and k star, well, it's just going to be that we're multiplying each of these by a half. Um, so that that's where this weighted average interpretation comes from and why it's useful so we can just define our half lifetime to be the time where this equation holds where our weighted average is just equal to a half and then we're just going to have to find the t or the time that it takes for this to be true and then we'll find our speed of convergence so we can just take the natural log of both sides of this equation to find t and because this is an exponential this this just sort of cancels out and we get uh, this line of equation and then we can just divide through by minus 1 minus alpha delta plus n plus g and so this ln of a half of course is equal to minus ln 2 so these negatives cancel out and we get that our half life t is equal to the natural log of 2 over uh, 1 minus alpha multiplied by sigma plus not sigma plus delta plus n plus g and this is our t half and this is what we think of as the speed of convergence so if we have a lower t here this is going to be a faster convergence it, it takes less t not time to converge to the steady state or at least to converge halfway to the steady state and if we increase t that means it's going to be taking a longer time to get to the steady state or to get half the way there so we have a slower speed of convergence in that case so in order to increase our speed of convergence we are going to want to increase this denominator because 
as we increase the denominator, we're going to be reducing the time it takes to get to steady state. So we have these parameters that are sort of dictating how how fast we converge. So we will increase the speed of convergence by increasing alpha or or no by decreasing alpha or by increasing delta n or g. And we usually assume that these are just fixed parameters, i.e. the policymaker can't choose to change them, so we, we can't really change our depreciation. We're going to assume that we can't really change our population growth rate, although we might be able to. And our exogenously given technological growth rate as well is not going to be able to change. And this alpha is just the income share of capital. So it's worth noting that this does not depend on our savings rate, which is the thing that we usually think the policymaker can control. So we're sort of assuming that our speed of convergence is exogenously given in this model. But what we can do is we can estimate the value of alpha, of delta, n, and g, and then we can calculate how fast the speed of convergence will be. So if we converge very quickly, and we we get to our steady state almost immediately then we're not really going to care about what happens in convergence because it's going to it's going to the time's going to elapse very quickly so we only really care about our steady state value of our variables however if it takes a very long time to converge it's a slow convergence then we do care about the journey of getting to steady state and we're going to have to think what 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 yeah, what's going to happen along that journey so imagine that we are changing our savings rate and we're thinking okay we're going to trade off today's consumption we're going to reduce consumption today if my pen would work reduce consumption today but increase it in the future well if we have a really slow level of convergence then this is going to take a long time we're going to have a lot of periods with reduced c we might have reduced c1 reduced c2 and so on and we're only going to see this increase in consumption in C T, where T is a high number. So we will start to care about the journey, and it may change what policies we decide to implement as a policymaker. So that will wrap up this video on speed of convergence. Please like if it was at all useful. That would be very helpful. Please do subscribe to get some extra economics in your subscription feed and check out the playlist for more solo growth model related videos.